President Trump is calling for a ceasefire in northern Syria as chaos and clashes erupt across the region. The president is also hitting Turkey with tough economic sanctions after invading Syria last week. This comes after President Trump withdrew U.S. troops from the northern part of the country, paving the way for Turkey to launch its military campaign against U.S. allied Kurdish fighters. Ben Tracy is the latest. The president of the United States called uh, on the president of Turkey to stop the invasion. Vice President Mike Pence attempted damage control as criticism mounts of President Trump's abrupt decision to withdraw troops from Syria, allowing for Turkey's invasion. We want an immediate ceasefire uh, and we want to begin negotiations uh, between Turkey and Syrian Defense Forces. The administration's initial statement announcing the withdrawal of troops set no boundaries for Turkey's military operation. But after bipartisan backlash, President Trump vowed to destroy Turkey's economy if it went through with this kind of invasion. If there wasn't, there should have been a very clear sanctions threat provided during that conversation to prevent exactly what Erdogan ended up doing. Now the White House is hitting Turkey's top government officials and ministries with sanctions, doubling steel tariffs to 50 percent and canceling negotiations over a $100 billion trade deal. These sanctions are very, very strong. While the U.S. will keep some troops in the region to prevent an ISIS resurgence, the president is broadly sticking by his initial decision to pull out and boasting of defeating 100 percent of the ISIS caliphate. As for the Kurdish fighters who were crucial in accomplishing that, Mr. Trump also said, let Syria and Assad protect the Kurds. Bashar al-Assad's Syrian government, a bitter enemy of the United States, is backed by Russia. This alliance between the Kurds and Assad is not good for us. Republican Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell issued a strongly worded statement Monday saying he was gravely concerned by our nation's apparent response thus far and that withdrawal would create a broader power vacuum in Syria that will be exploited by Iran and Russia. Ben Tracy is joining us now from the White House and CBS News Chief Congressional Correspondent Nancy Cordes is joining us from Capitol Hill. So Ben, first to you. The damage appears to already be done in northern Syria after President Trump essentially gave Turkey the green light to invade the region. Uh, we're seeing images coming out of there that are showing a carnage that has escalated in just seven days. So what is the point of these sanctions and calls for a ceasefire? Well, this appears to be damage control on the White House's part, kind of wanting to be seen as doing something. But these sanctions are likely to be too little too late. And a source tells CBS News that even administration officials acknowledge that this likely will not change Turkey's mind. And as you mentioned, the damage is done. They've crossed the border. They're very far into Syria. And now the death toll is mounting. Uh, it, it is interesting when you think of the White House approach here. President Trump had vowed to totally destroy Turkey's economy if it did an invasion like this. Well, these sanctions, while they will punish Turkey, they are not totally going to destroy its economy. So there is still some wiggle room there. On top of all of this, the timing of this is really interesting. President Erdogan of Turkey is scheduled to visit the White House next month. And we have asked White House officials if that meeting is still on. And so far, they are saying that nothing has changed. Mm. So, Nancy, it certainly seems as if the president made the decision to pull troops um, from northern Syria all on his own. It caught a lot of people off guard. So now moving forward, the president is making a lot of decisions about what to do in the <laughs> aftermath. How is Congress managing this or does Congress have the ability to, you know, have input or control what the president does? They have input, but as you've seen, that is uh, not a fail-safe process. What Democrats are now trying to do is pass a resolution that would basically call on the president to change course in Syria. Uh, the cat uh, would appear to be out of the bag, but regardless, what they want to do is get Republicans on record uh, showing that they are not happy with the president's actions. Republicans have been talking about a pack, package of sanctions on Turkey, and that is something that has bipartisan support that we should see move forward this week. But Democrats would like to go a step further, and now that they're all coming back to Capitol Hill after a two-week break, we'll be able to see just how swiftly Democrats move to try to get Republicans on the record on this issue. Uh, Nancy, though, I, you know, the statements coming out of Mitch McConnell's office do 
do not seem uh, I, I mean, you've got Lindsey Graham on one hand saying, yeah, the president's back on track and this is a great move. Lindsey McConnell seems to be more circumspect. Right. I mean, there was no secret that Mitch McConnell was caught off guard, just like everyone else, by the president's uh, agreement with Erdogan to pull U.S. troops out of Syria, and he was very disappointed in it. And and anything that Congress would do at this point, frankly, uh, would uh, only be trying to mop up a mess that has already been made and is still getting bigger.